God is just working through their church. But when you read the prophets, you find out that the creator of all things is working on a, a worldwide scene. And the Mashiach told us some things that we were supposed to uh, watch for uh, just before uh, our deliverance out of this country. America is stirring up and stretching out herself all over the earth, and she's been labeled the hammer of the whole earth. And through democracy uh, and military might, what they're doing is going all over the earth trying to set up democracy over the earth. And what, what, what that's doing in the Middle East is democracy will uh, destroy the entire way of life that the people in the Middle East have been living uh, uh, for thousands of years and they are not going to stand for it. But like I said before, when this when this thing I was on before and uh, I talked about this thing that's coming up on and that's happening in the Middle East with the war, George Bush is not bringing about any prophecies. Uh, a lot of people are talking about the prophecies in Daniel chapter 10 and chapter 11 with the war between the king of the north and the king of the south. But that war won't take place in, until after the sixth seal is opened in the Revelation chapter 6 and Lucifer is thrown out of heaven. Then that's when this will come about. And we'll know at this time that our, our time here in this place of our captivity is very, very short. Remember that Yahweh told uh, Abraham we'd be here 400 years. And the first slaves came over here in 1612. So we are right at the doors of our deliverance. This is why... There's so many disasters and so forth that's happening all over the earth. Why man is destroying the ecosystem. They're talking about what global warming is doing. And we can see the effects of global warming warming rather, uh, in Alaska, how uh, the ice shelves are melting and so forth and so on. As Yahweh is bringing about his strange act upon the earth. And it's going to be the most terrible times that has been upon the face of the earth. But like the scripture says, this is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Uh, 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 now, I come on and I, you know how I do things. I come on and I talk about what's on my mind. But what, if you want to, uh, you can call in and we can talk about uh, what's on your mind. They haven't put the, uh, the phone number up yet, but they will put the phone number up on the screen. And you can call in and we can talk about what you uh, uh, uh uh, talking about. But in the, in the meantime, let me read something uh, to you that Yahweh said was going to happen to our people. This is in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4. It says, uh, I'm going to start this at verse 24. For Yahweh your Elohim is a consuming fire, even a jealous Elohim. When you shall beget children and children's children, and you have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourself, and make a graven image or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of Yahweh your Elohim to provoke him to anger, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, that you shall soon utterly perish from off the land where you go over Jordan to possess it. You shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. And Yahweh shall scatter you among the nations, and you shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether Yahweh shall lead you, and there shall you serve God, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear, uh, uh, nor eat nor smell. And when you look at our, all of the religions that we practice today, all of the religions that we practice have been taught to us since we've been uh, uh, captives in this country. But our problem is we don't go back into the encyclopedias uh, in secular history and look and see uh, uh, when these various religions started and uh, who it was that started these things. And, but because if you did, you'll find out that the same people that uh, uh, taught us, miseducated us as the same people that taught us religion. So why should they educate us uh, 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 in, in, in the truth when we don't study ourselves? But what we do is we allow our ministers to, uh, that they've trained in seminaries to come in and fleece us for money and not telling us anything. The Mashiach, the Messiah told us to watch. When we begin to see these things come up on earth, look up because your redemption is near right at the doors. And people aren't watching today. What they've told people is Christ can come any day. No, he can't. Don't you believe that? 
You get in the book of Revelation and start at Revelation chapter 7 and read up through the end of the book of Revelation, you're going to see there's many things uh, that's going to take place that hasn't taken place yet, and the Mashiach can't come until after the seventh trumpet is blown and after the seventh vial is poured out upon the face uh, uh, of the earth. The phone number here is 404-892-5614. That's 404-892-5614. And whatever you have on your mind, this is, we call this the segment of our program, Ask the Elder. So whatever question that you have on your mind, pertain, uh, uh, comments you need to make uh, uh, pertaining to biblical and the secular history, then call in and let's chit chat a little and see uh, uh, what kind of dialect we can get going in this according to uh, the truth. And like I always say, you know, don't please don't call in with a bunch of junk that you can't prove or how you feel about things because it's how, we, how our fathers felt about things is the same thing that got us over here as slaves when you read the holy story so uh, like the scripture says prove all things so if you have some things you want to talk about or some comments that you want to make that uh that you can prove you can give us a call at 404-892-5614 uh, 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 and uh, you know it, it, it's it, it's a lot of things that, that the prophets say was going to take place that we just don't get off into because we don't read the prophets. Uh, let me read something to you out of the prophet Daniel that uh, that's going to uh, that's going to take place. I'm going to go into Daniel chapter seven, and I'm going to read some things that Daniel had to say out of. Uh, 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 I think I want to go into Daniel chapter eight, and I want to read some things to you that uh, that's going to take place uh, uh, among our people because. By us not getting these things, what we don't understand is that uh, these things are still going to come to pass whether we know them or not. And the thing that we have to ask ourselves is, why didn't we know that these things was coming up on the earth? Every first day of the week, uh, 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 we go to, uh, uh, we go, we are in church. But let me read something to you uh, that's going to take place. Uh, this is in Daniel chapter 7, and I'm going to... Uh, Pick this up uh, at verse 19. Now, there was four empires that was going to come up on the earth. The Babylonian Empire, which came up on the earth in 606 B.C., then the Medio Persian Empire, which came up in 539 B.C., the Greek Empire, which came up with Alexander the Great in 333, then the Roman Empire came up in 62, uh, uh, what they call B.C., and uh, Rome fell in 476, and we're living in the fragmented Holy Roman Empire. So the Roman Empire would be the fourth beast upon the earth, and it would be the empire that the Euro-Gentiles uh, would uh, be in control of, which the Mashiach is going to destroy at his return. This is in Daniel chapter 7, and I'm going to start this at verse 19. Uh, Daniel said, Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were as iron and his nails brass, which devour, break in pieces, and stamp the residue in, with the feet of it. Well, like I said, Rome fell in 476 A.D., and what they did was they divided through wars. They divided the earth among everyone but us as uh, uh, a people. And of the ten horns that was in his head, and of the other which came up from the horse, four, three fell. Even of that horn which had eyes and the mouth that spake great, very great things, whose look was most stout of his, hell, his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them until the ancient of days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possess the kingdom. Verse 23. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon, upon the earth, which shall be different from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and tread it down, and break it in pieces. And it, truly they are doing this with democracy and military might. And it's all coming through to Christians. Uh, verse uh, uh, 24. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings which shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall subdue uh, 
uh, be different from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. If you know anything about history, this took place uh, after Rome fell in 476 A.D., and uh, uh, three of the horns tried to uh, sack the Holy Roman Empire, and em Emperor Justini allied with Pope St. Leo, and they plucked those three horns up by the roots. So that's past history. Verse 25, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. Well, let's look at that. He always said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And he gave us holy days that we were supposed to keep during the year, that we were supposed to teach the nation. But what man did was change the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday. And then he put Christianity on the market. Emperor Constantine made it the, 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 the legal religion of the whole, whole Roman Empire. And then they began to give us holidays to where we can go and spend a whole lot of money about a bunch of paganism when you look right at it. And they shall be given unto his, into his hand until three and one half years. This is the great tribulation period that the book of Revelation uh, talks about. And the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it to the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given unto the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. So what it's talking about is that the problem that uh, this so-called renamed Negro over here in America, who is uh, three tribes of the uh, Hebrew Israelites, is talking about the problems that we are going to have, that, that we are going to face uh, uh, later on uh, in this captivity. Although we've been over here 400 years and a lot of things have ha has happened to our people, we just haven't seemed to look around and understand who our enemies really are. Our enemies are the ones that's always smiling in our face and patting us on the back and teaching us a bunch of stuff that the Bible really doesn't say, but it comes down to the interpretation of men uh, of the last 600 years uh, upon this earth. Uh, once again, the phone number here is 404-892-5614. That's 404-892-5614. And uh, when you read these things, and uh, you compare the book of Daniel to the book of uh, Revelation, you can very well see that those two prophets go hand in hand with each other. And the way to understand, a lot of people read the book of Revelation and say, well, the book is scary because it talks about a beast with seven heads and ten horns. But when you go back into the book of Daniel and start at chapter 7 and read uh, up through the end of the chapter, you find out that these were kings that was going to arise uh, uh, in, in the past, including one king which is going to uh, arise at the end of time. Now, let me read something to you about this last king that's going to arise. Is, uh, and if you notice, they're already putting the EU together. The EU is the revival of the Holy Roman Empire. The problem is America is in the way and she has to be destroyed. I think we got a call on the line. Go ahead, caller. You on the air? Elder, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, turn him up a little bit, please. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, uh, people, uh, the chapter that you're reading in Daniel, mm -hmm. uh, people don't realize that uh, a lot of what's uh, going over there in the Middle East refers to what you're reading in Daniel uh, about the uh, the uh, different empires that come upon the earth, mm -hmm. this last empire, mm -hmm. and that uh, it has a lot to do with us. But uh, when you listen to it on the news, it, it doesn't mention anything that it that concerns us concerning the stuff that's going over there in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And it has everything to do with us. As a matter of fact, the, the way the situation that the world is in today has a lot to do with these lowly Negroes in America, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And I just thought I'd uh, hang up and listen to what your comment comment is about that. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for calling in, my brother. And you're absolutely right. What George Bush is doing is he's, he's trying to put himself in the position uh, of something else that's going to take uh, that's going to take place. Uh, I'm going to read this. Uh, this is in Daniel chapter 11, and it talks about this last king, one of the last kings. Well, the last king that's going to come up on the earth, and it's talk also talk about the last pope that's going to be of the top Christian now 
the last pope that's going to be up on the earth. Now, this is in Daniel 11, and I'm going to start this in uh, verse 36. And this is what George Bush is trying to bring about. But if you read and see who, who is going to bring it about, it couldn't be uh, George Bush. It, this has to come out of Rome itself. Now, this is Daniel chapter 11 and verse 36. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. But that that is determined shall be done. Whatever Yahweh has already decreed through the holy prophets, that's going to be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. In other words, they ain't going to be talking about that Jesus Christ and all that stuff no more. See? They're going to be talking about another man here on the earth is, is the Mashiach because when you get in, uh, when, you, when, you, when you read and see what Christ had to say pertaining to when he was going to return, if you read in the book of Revelation, started uh, 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 Revelations uh, uh, chapter 6 and verse 6, verse 12. If you start there, you're going to find out that the heavens roll back like a scroll. Darkness is all over, uh, all over the earth and so forth. And these are the same thing that's going to take place when the Messiah returns. So once Lucifer is thrown out of heaven, this is when they're going to set up this man as the Messiah that has returned. And people, by them not knowing what the prophets had to say, uh, uh, then they're going to be deceived that this is the Messiah that has returned to the earth. But check this out. He's going to be a white boy. The Messiah was uh, a man of color. Okay. Uh, 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 verse uh, 38. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, meaning military power, and a God whom his father knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and precious stones and pleasant things. Thus he shall he do in the most stronghold with the strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the earth for gain. At the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. Now he's talking about what George Bush is trying to get over there stirred up now, but it's not his time. This has to come from the king that come out of Rome, from the last uh, king and the pope. It says, At the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter also into the glorious land, meaning he's going to enter into the land of Israel. And many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom, that's the people that's in Israel now that's calling themselves the Jews, and Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. These are Abraham's left nephew Lot's two boys, who are the Palestinians, okay, that's in, that's in, that's in our land right now. We the Palestinians. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the country, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. And the Eth Libyans and Ethiopians shall be at his steps. Uh, so as we, uh, as we can very well see, this is the war that's going to be led up to that's going to bring about the return of the Messiah. But the thing of it is, is this. You have to ask yourself, why on earth will all the kings of the earth gather together in Jerusalem, Israel, for the war of Armageddon? That's the question. That is the question. Uh, uh, and, and it's written here in the scripture. It's written here in the scripture. Uh, but see, first what has to happen is America has to fall so that the house of Judah uh, 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 can get up out of here and get to the wilderness. Like uh, like Yahweh said he was going to do. See, the prophet, he said, I don't do anything until I tell my servants the prophets first. Uh, but let me read something to you here out, out of Ezekiel uh, uh, chapter 20, and I'm going to pick this up at verse 33. It says, um, I think I better uh, I pick this up in verse 30, 32. It says, And that which come in your mind should not be at all, that you say we will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. 
As I live, saith the Adonai Elohim, surely with the mighty hand and with the stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein you were scattered with the mighty hand and with the stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith uh, the Adonai Elohim. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and bring you under the bond of the covenant, and will purge out from among you the rebels, and them that transgress against me. I'm going to bring them forth out of the countries where they sojourn, and they shall not and into the land of Israel, say, uh, and you shall know that I am Yahweh, I Elohim. And what you have to understand is this. In the gathering, the prophets told us that only one in three are going to make it out of this, uh, of this thing that we're in. This is why there's so many people that don't even want to deal with the things that's written in the Scripture. What they prefer to deal with is what their preachers tell them on Sunday. And he hasn't got the foggiest idea about anything but what it takes to make some money. Uh, 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 when I came up, uh, they, they, they taught a different religion in the church than they're teaching now. Uh, a different thing, rather. But today, man has gotten off into organized religion, and that's what he, uh, they're teaching, his religion in the church. And any fool knows that religion was brought upon the nations by the Gentiles to keep people in subjection. That, that, that's all it's about. But like uh, 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 my brother, it is leading up to uh, uh, the deliverance of the, of the children of Israel. This is why he told us in Zechariah, deliver yourself, O Zion, the dwells in the daughter of Babylon. Well, the Roman Catholic Church is the mother, the great whore in Revelation 17. And we know that, uh, well, a lot of people know that uh, Martin Luther, an uh, excommunicated German uh, 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 monk, separated the protesters from the Catholics in 1572. And then later on, they came up over here, and these Christians murdered off the Indians and took their country and set up a governmental system, and, and then went to Africa and bought some slaves from the Africans and brought them back over here and recorded the worst slavery in the pages of history. Now, guess what? We've integrated. Ain't that something? We've integrated. It reminded me back of what was going on in World War I when they was uh, training brothers uh, with sticks instead of guns. Brothers walking around uh, with, with uh, army uniforms on talking about pow, pow. <laughs> but anyway, that, the reason uh, they thought that we knew who our enemies were. But the thing of it is, is they found out later on that we did not know who our enemy was, so they quit us with everything, because we'll fight for anybody but ourselves. Uh, I think we got another call on the line. Go ahead, call the young man. Shalom, my brother. Uh, shalom, my brother. Yes, uh, last week I was talking to some brother, uh, a part of the Hebrew Israelite. Uh, uh, brother, brother yes, man, uh, you have to turn your TV down and speak in your telephone. So, yes, sir. Uh, yes, can I was you speaking to down last week and speak about. in your telephone. Uh, I can't hear you uh, over your TV. Uh, turn your TV down so I can speak in your telephone. And speak yes. up so I can Hello? hear you. Yeah. I got it right. Okay. okay. I was speaking to some brother uh, knowing that Hebrew Israelite concerned the law of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I wanted to know in a depth study from you, the elder, you go in depth on things mm -hmm. about what Paul said in Galatians. Mm -hmm. Chapter two, verse eighteen to twenty-one. Mm -hmm. So, and then I have a second-party question I want to ask you because you go in depth on things. Okay, uh, what you talking about, Paul? Talk about when we are not under the law, we are under grace. Uh, Galatians two, verse eighteen through twenty-one. Okay. Where he said, "Yeah." Go ahead and read it. Okay, for I deal again the things which I describe. Make myself a transgressor for those the law I am dead to the law that I might live unto God. Mm -hmm. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless live yet. Not I, but Christ lives in me. Mm -hmm. Being Christ, Christ obeyed the law. Mm -hmm. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I have by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm -hmm. I do not frustrate the grace of God for righteousness. 
come by the law then Christ died in vain. The being a Hebrew Israelite, mm -hmm. y'all know righteousness come by the law. That's why I want to know in depth mm -hmm. what you feel about how Christ, how, how Paul feel about the law well, in relation to the relation people. Well, what you have to do, my brother, when you when you deal with that, what you have to do, you can't just start it right there. See, that's the way they. I understand talking. that. Okay, you have to go back and pick up and find out what he was talking about. He was talking about the works of the law. The works of the law was the animal sacrifice. Okay. So, so we didn't have to do the animal sacrifice no more. But I tell you what, you can do. You can read the book of Acts. Acts is the first thirty years of the church, and you're going to find out that Paul was always in a hurry to get back to Jerusalem to keep the holy days. You Hello? To me? And the holy yes, days is part of the law. But let me read you something here out of Romans, and what it's going to seem like is Paul don't know that Paul can't make up his mind if you take what, he, what, what was said there for face value and don't do the research in. I mean, you can't even drive down the street without law. When you get married, there's a there's a law about that. They got laws that govern everything. I mean, you can't live on earth without law, you know. And people are going to tell me you got to keep man's law, but God ain't got no law. He's just going to say, "Well, you a good fellow. Come on, no, 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 it don't work like that." That's the same reason y'all we brought the flood up on earth because man wouldn't do what he said, and it's the same reason why he put us over here in this captivity because our fathers wouldn't do what he said, and it's the same reason so much death and destruction is going on on the earth today is because of sin. They call it a crime, but it's not crime; it's sin. Let me read something to you. Paul said out of Romans two. It says, uh, "This I'm going to pick uh, 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 this up in Romans two and in verse twelve. It says." For as many as have sinned without law shall also die without the law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Now we can go a little further in this in chapter 3. It says, uh, uh, I'm going to pick this up at verse uh uh, uh, 30 it says seeing uh, it is one God who shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith do we make void the law through faith God forbid yes we establish the law you see so the law the only thing that was done away with when you read uh, Hebrews in the book of Romans uh, you find out that the only thing that was done away with was the works of the law uh, and that was the animal sacrifice. This is why uh, the, when the Messiah, Messiah told his apostles, say, tarry ye at Jerusalem till you be endowed with power from on high. And they stayed there, and it was on the day of Pentecost, one of Yahweh's feast days, that they was gathered together when the Holy Ghost came. You see, and, uh, 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 and that was according to the law, uh, according to the law, 50 days after you brought the sheaf of the first fruits, uh, you were supposed to bring a new uh, a new offering to Yahweh. So 50 days after the Mashiach was resurrected from the dead, we came to the day of Pentecost, and the apostles were gathered on that day. And like I said before, uh, let me read something to you that's going to take place in the first resurrection that people don't that, that people don't do, deal with. I'm going to read uh, some things out of the last chapter of the prophet Isaiah. So Yahweh didn't leave nothing for you to surmise. He left everything in, in the New Testament. Tell you, say, search the Scriptures. Nobody goes. The Scriptures is the Old Testament. The New Testament is not Scripture. The New Testament is letters that were written to various people and various churches that Paul was, uh, was setting up. And what the, what the Gentiles managed to do, they managed to build them a religion of letters that was written. Throw the rest of the book away. Uh, let me read something to you uh uh, I'm going to start this uh, at uh, Isaiah 66 and verse 19. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nation, to Spain and to Africa that draw the bow, to Tubal and Javan, to the isles afar off that have not heard of my fame, neither seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. And the Gentiles shall bring all of your brethren for an offering unto Yahweh out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in leaders upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem, said Yahweh, as the children of Israel bring an offering and a clean vessel into the house of Yahweh. 
I will also take for them for priests and for Levites, saith Yahweh. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I make shall remain before me, saith Yahweh, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another should all flesh come to worship before me, saith Yahweh. Now, he said from one new moon to another and one Sabbath to another. The new moon is written back in the law book. The Sabbath is written back in the law book. And when you get into the New Testament, the apostles, Paul had a habit of going into the synagogues wherever he was on the Sabbath day and sitting down for to read or to reason with the folk. And, and what happened was the Sabbath wasn't changed until Emperor Constantine and Pope St. Leo changed it in 312 A.D. Uh, how, how dare they have the audacity to try to change something that Yahweh... The Sabbath day was the first thing Yahweh blessed and sanctified. And the Sabbath day was the first thing them Gentiles changed. And then they came up and gave us that Peter Rabbit stuff. And that Santa Claus with them flying reindeer and all that other garbage. And the church do it too. Tell me Christ born in December 25th and the Bible tell me he born in the summer. What kind of mess is that? Uh, I think we got another call on the line. Go ahead, call you in there. Yes, uh, you went in depth for that baby. Uh, on that, but uh, like I said, I had a second part of the question I want to ask you about concerning Paul mm -hmm. in the book of Romans. Mm -hmm. When he said Adam and Christ, when, when Adam Adam was first brought sin in, in chapter uh, 5, mm -hmm. verse 12, where it says, When Adam sin, sin entered into human race. Mm -hmm. Okay, when I slip over, uh, flip with me to uh, first Timothy. Uh, are you going in Romans? Or are you going uh, in Timothy? I'm going. I mean, you know where it's at in Romans chapter three. Okay. Where it's at, uh, well, on chapter five, I mean well, verse uh, twelve. Where, where are you going? Are you going? I'm in Romans chapter five, verse twelve. Okay. Where it says Adam, where sin is a human through Adam. And okay, then when I turn and read the letter that Paul. Chapter Timothy in chapter two, first Timothy chapter two, verse thirteen. Oh God made Adam first, mm -hmm. and afterward He made Eve, mm -hmm. and it was the woman, not Adam, who was deceived by Satan. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and what I'm saying, this woman entered sin in the world instead of Adam. Read the letters of Timothy, what Paul wrote to Timothy, mm -hmm. where it says that he was deceived, not Adam. Yeah. Okay, so he brought sin into the world. Yeah. Not Adam. That's what I'm saying. Paul said Adam brought sin in the world. Well, the reason why Paul said Adam brought sin in the world because Adam was responsible. A brother is responsible for the sins of his wife. Yes, now, but the world was. When Eve. When Eve ate that that fruit, Adam was standing right there. He, I know where you're gonna go with well, that. Well, you know, you know, you know where I'm going at with with it, brother. You know, you know what I'm trying to say. See, when he when she picked up that thing to eat it, he should have knocked it out of hand. So no, you can't do that, woman. See, but what she he did was he allowed that to happen, and then he was standing right there, and she gave it to him, and he did eat. You see, so it was Adam's fault that sin came into the world because he allowed that. Adam uh, is uh, is uh, 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 was responsible for what his uh, uh, seed did. It's the same thing in your house today. If your wife commit an atrocity, uh, you're responsible because you should have disallowed that. If your children commit an atrocity, you are responsible because they, those kids are your responsibility. It's your job to raise them kids up in the way that they're supposed to go so that they will obey the laws of the land like Yahweh told us to do so they won't have any problems. Uh, uh, the thing of it is is that whoever commits sins in your family, see, you have to understand, you have to go back in the law book and find out who it is that have to make intercessions. See, only the males had to appear before Yahweh three times a year. All the males, you see. That's why 
uh, they was gathered together on, on the Feast of Pentecost in the New Testament because that was one of the days, the, the time that they were supposed to appear. Now, what he had to appear for was to make intercession for his family, just like Job did. Job went and sacrificed his family just in case they had did something wrong. Well, that's what the whole deal is. It's the males of the family who have to make intercession, not the females. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, even nowadays, if you look at what the church is doing today, you got many, many women that's coming out a as ministers. But that only took place in the last half of the last century. If you go back and read the entire uh, uh, New Testament, you'll find out when you get to talking about that animal sacrifice and everything and so forth, those were the works of the law. That's why Paul say we're not under the works, right? Well, we're not under the uh, uh, animal sacrifice. And you have to ask yourself one thing. When you talk about judgment, judgment speaks of law. You can't have judgment without law. Well, how can Yahweh judge the earth without law? And the law code is written down. The only thing that we don't have to deal with is the animal sacrifices. Because when John saw the Mashiach, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. But what did the Messiah say? The Messiah said, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He came to redeem our people. And then after he redeemed our people, then that's when, after the Messiah was resurrected, that's when he sent the, uh, the apostles out into the world to teach the gospel. He did not send the Gentiles. He did not send the Africans. He sent the apostles because, let me read uh, something to you here that, that Paul had to say uh, uh, also that a lot of people uh, 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 miss. Uh, 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 in the book of Romans here. This is Romans chapter 3, and I'm going to read this, start this at verse 1. It says, What advantage then has the Jew? Or what profit is there in circumcision? Now, Paul is asking, what advantage does the Jew have? If somebody got an advantage, I want to be on that. He says, much every way, chiefly because unto them was committed the oracles of God. All of the things that God had to say, he said to one nation of people. That was the Hebrew Israelites. The Hebrew Israelites wrote the book, and now we done turn around, and now the Gentiles teach it back to us, and we just as confused as we ever were, but we refused to go to the Hebrews to get it. I think we got another caller on the line. Go ahead, caller. You on there. Go ahead, caller. Okay. Let me read something else to you here out of Romans 9. Uh, this is Romans 9, I'm going to start, this is verse 1, it says, I say the truth in, in the Mashiach, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. For I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I wish that myself were accursed from the Mashiach, my brethren, my, according, and my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption in the God's family and the glory of God and the covenants of God and the giving of the law of God and the service of God and the promises of God. All the things of Yahweh was given to uh, the 12 tribes of Israel to give to mankind. But them, them, them Christians didn't want us to give them nothing. What them Christians did, them Christians put us in captivity and then they went and did this thing themselves. And to show you that, uh, everybody walking around here talking about the servants of the living God. Well, let me read something to you out of Revelation chapter 7. This is verse 1. It says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea or any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the service of our God in their forehead. And I heard the number of them that were sealed, and they were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. That's who Yahweh's service has already had, always has been. This is why he told them, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Now, let's go a little further with that in the book of Revelation. Folks like to deal in this New Testament. Let's go back into Revelation's uh, uh, 20, 21, and I'm going to pick this up at verse 9. It says, And there came one unto me, unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven uh, vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. 
Now the church tell you they the bride. Okay, but let's read and see. Verse uh, 10. And he carried me away into the spirit into a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was likened to a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written down, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Well, where's everybody else's gate? Huh? Where's everybody else's gate? The new city, Jerusalem, uh, was for the children of Israel and those who grab on to the children of Israel. This is why Zechariah 8 chapter told you that when the Messiah take a set of his kingdom, that the nation's going to grab on to the coattail of him that is, that is a Jew saying, we will go with you because we have heard that God is with you. Why do y'all think that America and Europe is spending all that money with the Israelis over there in the Middle East, who they set up in 1948 as the Jews, huh? Why do you think that? Because they're trying to bring about a prophecy that's going to pertain to uh, those Gentiles and all the prophecies pertaining to the rulership of this kingdom is given to the children of Israel by covenant, not just by words that Paul had to say, by covenants. And this is what people fail to understand, that Yahweh is a covenant God. If it ain't written in the covenant, cut. I think we got another call on the line. Go ahead, call you in there. Yes, uh, I've been listening and I've been reading, but I don't have my glasses. So, but you mentioned the twelve tribe of Israel. Yes. But it only speak a, a half a tribe is missing the tribe of Manasseh. Pardon me. A half a tribe is missing. They speak about eleven and a half tribe of I'm, I'm right, no, but no, a no. half a tribe is missing. No, no, no. You had understand. You had Joseph, Jacob had twelve boys, uh -huh. right? Joseph. Remember, Joseph had two children? Right. Okay, so what happened was he took Joseph's portion and gave one, uh, Ephraim, uh, made him a half-tribe, and his other brother, Manasseh, a half-tribe, and they was the one who represented the, the tribe of Joseph. Okay, so that make up the other half tribe. Yeah, it was Ephraim and Manasseh. Uh, uh, when you you get back in the, in the, in the, in, the, in, the, in the Kings and read when in First Kings when Yahweh divided the nation, uh, divided the tribes, uh -huh. and he gave Ephraim ten tribes, and he gave Judah one tribe. When the priests, the Levites, they was already in the land of Judah, and they was the Lord's portion. And uh, right now, today, these are the same three tribes that you got over here, Benjamin, Judah, and Levi. But you had a half-tribe of uh, 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 Ephraim and a half-tribe of Joseph. This is why he told you in the prophet, I'm going to take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and put it in the hand of Judah. And break the one stick in my hand. In other words, right. we won't be divided no more. We'll be a nation. Right. But, but he was just, what he was just, this is why when, uh, 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 when you get in the book of Revelation, when the redactor copied the names of, of the 12 tribes, he mentioned Joseph and he mentioned Ephraim. So you know that uh, what he did was he left Dan out of there. But if you, if, when you go into Ezekiel 44 and look at the way that the land is going to be set, the portion of the land is going to be set up once the Messiah returns, you find out that, uh, that, that Ephraim and Manasseh was given one portion. That's the portion of Joseph. Okay, I have another question. Okay. Okay, in the book of, in the book of Ham, where he said the Ham generation, mm -hmm. and it's a put, put, P-U-T, supposed to be the black race or the race of Africa. Is that so? Uh, Ham was an African himself. Uh-huh. Ham inherited all of Africa. When you get back in Genesis 10, right. Ham inherited all of Africa. And all of those sons mentioned were the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, and the Cushites, and, and so forth. That was uh, Ham's son. Now, uh, uh, Cush was Ethiopia, uh, the Ethiopians. Mm -hmm. And the Ethiopians had moved up into Egypt and uh, put them to tribute. That's how it got the name Egypt, which means land of bondage. Okay, so the Ethiopians became uh, 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 the Egyptians. And when you get into reading the stories, every time Yahweh brought a nation upon us, a lot of our people went down and hid among the Ethiopians, right? Right, because... Well, people... we can do that right here in Atlanta today, can't we? Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Can I ask another question? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, I lost that question. I'll get it in a minute. But let me ask you something else. When 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 Solomon had captured the Israelites, mm-hmm. and he said he did not make him a slave, mm-hmm. but he also had the Hittites and the, you know people of Ham mm-hmm. with him. What what did he mean by that? Well. So, you got to understand one thing about Solomon. I really didn't uh, uh, when you said that uh, when Solomon captured Ham. No, 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 no. Solomon he says that he did not put the Israelites in in slavery, but still he made them their captain and, and different things like that, uh, uh, his army and stuff like that. Who that Solomon? Yeah, yeah, he did. Okay, but he said and the Hittite and all those folks was there too. But what did they do? Well, those were the people that, that was our servants in the land. Just like we are servants in this country here, and they got Hispanics that's coming over here in service and so forth. Well, uh, those were Solomon's servants that was left in the land. See, when we first went into Israel, the Canaanites was in the land. Right. They had spread all the way over almost to Europe. Right. And uh, what we had to do was go in and, and, and put them the tribute. Uh, uh, so it was a lot of them that Yahweh told he wasn't going to rid us all of out of all the people, but he was going to keep some of them in the land to keep us on our toes, you see. Okay. So we had Canaanites, Hivites, Jebusites. We had a lot of African people that was in our land that was, that was under tribute because they was in the land when we went in there. We didn't, we didn't kill them all. What we did was we preserved some of them. Right, that's true. Okay, so what was Solomon? Solomon was a Hebrew Israelite. Solomon was the son of David. Okay. The Day of Atonement is the most solemn holy day of the year. It is observed only once in a year, in the seventh month on the tenth day of the month. This day is set aside for fasting, prayer, and the repentance of sins. Just like everything in Yah's creation, this day was designated even before it was revealed to mankind. The book of Jubilees, chapter 5, verses 17 through 18, explains this. And of the children of Israel it has been written and ordained, If they turn to him in righteousness, he will forgive all of their transgressions and pardon all of their sins. It is written and ordained that he will show mercy to all who turn away from all their guilt once each year. The Book of Jubilees gives us additional information in regards to the natural origin of the Day of Atonement. The following verses briefly retell the story of Jacob's great love for his son Joseph, for whom he gave a coat of many colors. This same love by Jacob for his son Joseph helped to create the hate for Joseph by his ten older brothers. The opportunity to exact this great hatred for Joseph by his older brothers came to pass, and they conspired to kill him, then opted to sell him as a slave. Later, they lied to their father Jacob about his son Joseph being killed by beasts. They truly broke his heart. This evil lie took place on the Day of Atonement. Let's pick this up in Jubilees chapter 34, verses 10 through 19. In the seventh year of this week, he sent Joseph to learn about the welfare of his brothers from his house to the land of Shechem, and he found them in the land of Dothan. And they dealt treacherously with him, and formed a plot against him to slay him. But changing their minds, they sold him to Ishmaelite merchants, and they brought him down into Egypt. And they sold him to Potiphar, the eunuch of the Pharaoh, the chief of the cooks, priest of the city of Elu. And the sons of Jacob slaughtered a kid, and dipped the coat of Joseph in the blood, and sent it to Jacob their father on the tenth of the seventh month. And he mourned all that night, for they had brought it to him in the evening. And he became feverish with mourning for his death, and he said, An evil beast hath devoured Joseph. And all the members of his house mourned with him that day, and they were grieving and mourning with him all that day. And his sons and his daughter rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted for his son. And on that day Bilhah heard that Joseph had perished, and she died mourning him. 
and she was living in Quafratef, and Dinah also, his daughter, died after Joseph had perished. And there came these three mournings upon Israel in one month. And they buried Bilhah over against the tomb of Rachel, and Dinah also, his daughter, they buried there. And he mourned for Joseph one year, and did not cease, for he said, Let me go down to the grave mourning for my son. For this reason it is ordained for the children of Israel that they should afflict themselves on the tenth of the seventh month, on the day that the news which made him weep for Joseph came to Jacob his father, that they should make atonement for themselves thereon with a young goat on the tenth of the seventh month, once a year, for their sins. For they had grieved the affliction of their father regarding Joseph his son. And this day has been ordained that they should grieve thereon for their sins, and for all their transgressions, and for all their errors, so that they might cleanse themselves on that day once a year. <clears throat> The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, describes all of the annual holy days that Yah commanded to be kept. Leviticus, chapter 23, verses 26 through 32, explains how this very holy day must be observed as a total fast from sundown to sundown. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month there shall be a day of atonement, it shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be, that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls. In the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even, shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. The Day of Atonement commemorates the evil inflicted by the tribes of Israel against their father Jacob. This evil and sin connects with the evil and sin that all of the tribes of Israel have committed against our father Yah, both past and present. On the Day of Atonement, like the sons of Jacob were made to pray, fast, and repent, so must the tribes of Israel today both natural Israel and spiritual Israel, must pray, fast, and repent from all sins committed throughout the year for the opportunity of cleansing from these trespasses.